I didn't bond with him. I, I still don't know him completely because I think it's just a protective thing, you know, that he's not going to live that long and he hasn't got a very great life expectancy, so why get too close to something that you're going to lose? They're most painful words for any mother to have to say. But for Caroline Camus and her husband David, family life has brought anxieties they never thought they'd face. Already parents to two healthy children, when their son Charlie was born in August 2009, it was soon apparent something was wrong. Kaz was convinced in hospital before we brought him home there was something wrong with him, that he wasn't taking his bottles properly. He kept losing colour, so very often he would be out and he'd look really quite pink and healthy and the next minute he looked just like a corpse lying in the pram and he had no colour. So I came home when he was on his feed and he was completely white. His so lips were going all blue. So I just picked him up, stuck him in the car and drove him to St Thomas's. In the rush hour, it took me two hours and he was sitting next to me and there was at least a dozen times where I was shaking him because he, he looked dead. If even now Caroline and David find these images frightening to look at, more distressing for them is the fact it took fully six months to diagnose Charlie's condition. I was going neurotic. I was like, well, ask the doctors about this one. Has he got this one? Why, why do they not think he's got this? Have you tested him for this one? Um, needing like, everything ruled out, almost to the point that I was like having a spreadsheet going, well, he hasn't got this one and he hasn't got that one. So there's only so many things he can have. Um, but I wasn't going to give up until I knew exactly what he had. He was born in August and we got the diagnosis in January. If he'd have had that two or three months earlier, who knows what difference mm. he could have. He could be walking now. Charlie is pulling himself up. And that he's a little boy who's full of life is self-evident. Yet the realities of his condition remain. Unable to swallow, he can only be fed invasively. By nature, he may be undemanding. But his daily routine of medication and therapy is grueling and all-consuming. You're aware of how what he's doing, but you can't help but still see other children and wonder what ages they are and what they're doing, comparing to what he's doing. But you've just got to try and think, well, we would have taken this 12 months ago. If somebody had given you this option 12 months ago, you'd have ripped their arm off. The Camus family do all they can for Charlie and hope to do more. They hope for hope itself. The Lilly Foundation shares their hope. Thanks to the money we've raised, prenatal gene testing will soon be available. For someone like Caroline, who last year found herself pregnant again, that alone would have made a world of difference. George wasn't planned. He was a bit of an accident, wasn't he? Um, and I'm a bit of a worrier at the best of times. <coughs> and I, I worry throughout all my pregnancies but even more so with this one because you go for your scans and they say well, everything's fine but so with Charlie scans, I had all the antenatal scans with Charlie and they said no, everything's perfect and even now, I still worry now. For their younger son, the fears and anxieties will continue but does Charlie himself feel he's unlucky? Or like his parents, does he too feel his life is a gift? When he comes in um, and he starts smiling at people, he lights up the room. Yeah. And, you know, I just wouldn't have it any other way. Wouldn't have him any other way, because that's all we've known, really. Um, and, I don't know, some, sometimes you feel a bit of a fraud, because people come and see him and think, oh, he looks fine. He looks, he looks OK, there's nothing wrong with him. Like, OK, on the face of it, he, he, he looks well. But we know there are other things that, that aren't happening that should be happening. So you, sometimes you do feel a bit of a fraud. But, as you see, he comes in and he smiles, he lights up the room. Charlie's fight for life is the Lily Foundation's fight. It can also be your fight. It's been a huge year in lots of different ways. We've had loads of people doing lots of different things. We've had um, charity fundraising events around the world taking place. And the research has taken a huge leap forward and doctors are in a place where they didn't think they'd be for another 10 years, so we're absolutely thrilled. The technology is moving further and faster ahead, and what we're planning to do now is use a newer technology, whereas rather than looking at 100 genes, we can look at 25,000 genes. So the main challenge then will be looking at the data and working out which changes in the gene 
are causing a disease and which are not. So research continues apace. There's still lots more challenges and we couldn't do it without your help really. When I see you At the moment we've, we know about 100 or more genes which can cause mitochondrial disease, so we might have to sequence any number of those. With this technology we can sequence all those 100 genes simultaneously and hopefully get the answer. Funding is absolutely crucial. As you know, it's tough times and without your support this research wouldn't be happening. So it is essential to keep trying to find the answers for the families, to make the choices they need to for them and their future and for future pregnancies. When I see your face, there's not a thing that well, this is Dave. He's normally running with Jonathan Pierce. Jonathan can't do it this year, but Dave, Jonathan made me promise we'd have a chat with you. We're helping to raise money for mitochondrial, mitochondrial disease and metabolic diseases. And uh, like I say, we're up to £300,000 now, so fantastic. Well, I hope she's up there smiling at you somewhere. Halfway to go, you get cracking. It's the Lilly Foundation. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a charity for a mitochondria disease, which is a disease that affects young children. And um, we're here today trying to raise some money uh, to put into the fund. You'd be amazed at how many people are affected. And it's just they haven't been tested for it. And if they can be tested for it, and then treated. As I say, the minute Charlie was diagnosed, the minute they started treating him, his quality of life turned around 100%. 100%.